Now, one of the most important and foundational concepts when it comes to headless content management is that of content modeling or sort of how you build and maintain the schema for your project. We're not going to get into the details of what this is and how this works, but if you're keen, I'd recommend heading over to the Academy section of our website where we've got an in-depth coverage into the concept of content modeling, especially how it applies to building with Dato CMS. So let's take a very, very quick look into this section of the CMS, keeping in mind that as an editor or a marketer, you're probably never really going to interact with it. Um, this is where your dev team or your product or architecture team would keep the blocks for your project. So kind of the structure behind the project you're building. So since we're working with an empty project, we will create some models further on in these videos. But for now, let's go back to the project we've been looking at to understand the relation between models, blocks and contents. So in the case of a very simple website, a blog post would be a model comprising of several fields. Think of it as a template for your blog post. In this case, it's very likely that you'd have a title, the content itself, as well as some relations to other pieces of content like an author or a tag. It's important to note that you don't always need to create subsequent fields for anything that's common between multiple content types. What I mean is a blog post and a press release would both most likely have an author. So you don't need to create fields for an author in each of these models. You can simply create an additional model called an author and reuse it across multiple content types. This also ties into the concept of reusable content within headless CMS, which makes it a lot more efficient to work with. Another point to note is that of the concept of blocks. Blocks, to put it simply, are things you would probably embed within a model. So let's oversimplify the example of an author. Let's maybe look at something like a quote or a button. It's very likely that your blog post and your press release would have a quote or a button, but this might also exist for multiple other content types. Taking a look at our own website on our blog posts, we have a quote which normally has the content itself, as well as an author and a title. And this is also used in our case study templates. So instead of us having to add, let's say a text field for a quote and another text field for an author and another relation and so on and so forth and going crazy, all we do is simply create a block that we would call a quote or a button, add this into a model for a blog post or a case study. And there we go. Whenever we're creating a case study, we have the flexibility to add n number of models and blocks and any other field that we may want to work with. Might be a bit confusing, but I promise this is going to get a lot easier once we start creating models together in the upcoming section on content modeling and on content management.